Good evening, everybody. Thank you. Someone a little bit er uh, earlier ago said, whoa, I really like that shirt on you. And I, it's the first time I've heard it all night since I got here. No one has even noticed my shirt. Um, well, um, good evening. If you are here by mistake right now, I'm going to give you like the count of five to just get away while the getting's good. Um, because tonight there is some fun and some excitement, uh, some joke telling, and some really good music. I am excited about um, some duets between Evan here and Sean. The good news is if, um, if the jokes start getting really bad, I am just going to stand up and get them to start playing extra. It's like the, the award show music, like play them off. That's just, not now, hold on. Okay, wait a minute. Um, so uh, this is Holy Humor uh, Worship, Holy Humor Sabbath Worship. Uh, several reminders for you. Number one is Sabbath weekend. And so uh, we are worshiping tonight and then having tomorrow as a day of intentional Sabbath rest and renewal. And so there's many things that we can do to fill our time, but not as many of them are fulfilling. And so I encourage us and invite us to make good use of that time tomorrow in whatever ways are going to feed parched souls and nourish us for the week ahead. Um, so we're worshiping here for that, and then off tomorrow morning uh, for Sabbath rest. It is holy humor, which is a historic custom and tradition of the Christian church in the Eastern Orthodox tradition, in the Catholic tradition, in the Protestant tradition, until uh, Pope Clement X banned it um, because humor could not be in the context of church. Um, <laughs> That, I was not going for a booing Pope Clement the Tenth action there, but um, but do no humor. And now we have humor back because in recent decades, uh, the reemergence of this holy humor tradition has uh, come to fruition. It is a reminder that the greatest joke of all was the joke that evil thought it could win. And on Easter Sunday with an empty tomb, God had the last laugh. And so that holy humor tradition has morphed from uh, priests including jokes in their sermons um, to uh, lots of fun and games and costumes to, um, I understand sometimes in the past, in the long, long distant past, there would be members of congregations who would play tricks and pranks on the pastor. That's not, now that is still banned. Um, but, but every, <laughs> but everything else is fair game. Um, so we are here, we're gonna have some fun tonight. Um, if you uh, have not already had a chance to do so, uh, please fill out a friendship pad, pass it down the row. There's also a virtual friendship pad for those who are with us online right now. I also want to draw your attention to some announcements in the bulletin. Uh, one month from today, the May Sabbath week, uh, one month's worship from today, May Sabbath, we will have a Mother's Day weekend um, it's a, a meal between the lunch and dinner hour, so that's dinner. 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 Okay, so we're having a Mother's Day weekend dinner next month before the Sabbath service. Sign up out on the uh, the note uh, in the narthex, so we know how much food to prepare. It is sponsored by the Men's Luncheon Fellowship Group. It is going to be a delicious meal, so make note of that. Um, you'll also see that next Sunday after worship, we have a uh, uh, Sunday adult ed Sunday school gathering following the coffee hour. Um, it has been on the books for quite a while, uh, a conversation about uh, the history and practice of book bans throughout our society. Uh, it occurs to me with recent uh, news uh, of legislation enacted earlier this week in our state, that conversation next Sunday has just become that much more pertinent and important for us. So I encourage you to stay around for that after worship next Sunday. Um, and make note of the other announcements in the bulletin as well, including a greatest needs list from our friends at Grace Jordan Elementary School, hoping to get the, get the school year over with uh, on a strong suit, uh, some of the things that they are most in need of at this point. 
Um, I believe that is all the announcements that we have uh, to get us started for today. Um, and um, well, you know, okay, one last thing. Stop me if you've heard this. Um, you are a liturgist serving in a worship service with a pastor who gets crazy ideas at the last minute. And you prepare a scripture passage that ends up being pulled out from under you. Um, what, what he's going to read for scripture tonight is not what's in the bulletin because I told him a little bit earlier ago that it wouldn't be. Um, if that is disappointing to you because you came looking for what is in the bulletin, it was his fault. <laughs> um, but if you like the direction where this is going, then it was me. Okay, are we clear? Okay, cool. Um, we should open with prayer before things get out of control because I can only imagine what that would look like. Um, in Sabbath worship, we uh, sing an opening prayer in song. And um, so today, this might be a song that some of you know, and it might be a song that some of you are learning for the first time. But I am going to teach you call and response. So I am going to sing a phrase, and then you are going to repeat me. Now, don't confuse this practice, because once we put it all together, it will still be a call and response. And so um, we're... Let's just do it and see how it goes, okay? Okay, so what could go wrong? Oh, by the way, it's in Spanish, and so um, <laughs> added, little, uh, added little fun there. Okay, ready? So uh, repeat this after me. Gloria, adios. Gloria, adios. Gloria, adios. Gloria, adios. Gloria, adios. Gloria en los cielos. You've done this once, so now I'm going to do that entire phrase. You're going to repeat that entire phrase after me. You're ready. I see it on your face. Gloria a Dios. Gloria a Dios. Gloria en los cielos. Your turn. Gloria a Dios. Gloria a Dios. Gloria en los cielos. Beautiful. Now, a Dios la gloria por siempre. got this and now are you ready for the easy part let's go to the next slide here's the next the end of the song alleluia amen alleluia amen alleluia amen easy right easy now we're going to do it uh, again the whole way through i'm going to sing it and then you're going to repeat each of those phrases and uh, and then we'll see how it sounds. You ready? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Got one person that says sure. Can't, can't go any more poorly than the practice. And, okay. Gloria a Dios. Gloria a Dios. Gloria and los cielos. Your turn. to add two more elements to this to complete the ensemble. Element number one, we're going to sing it. That, that's advanced. Whoever said the rounds, get out of here. <laughs> um, element number one, we're going to sing it a little faster. Element number two, we're going to sing it like we mean it. <laughs> okay? That's, that's all I'm asking. Okay? Are we ready? Yes. 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 Gloria a Dios. Gloria a Dios. Gloria and los cielos. Your turn. Gloria a Dios. Gloria a Dios. Gloria and los cielos. Adios. La gloria por siempre. Gloria, Gloria, 
and pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, friends. That sounded like he meant it. And the thing that pushed it over the edge was the egg shaker. So thank you for that. Excellent. Excellent. Let us call ourselves to worship before things get crazy. Peter. And yes, those watching at home, those are as bright as they look. <laughs> Our God keeps showing up for us in unexpected places. When we face uncertainty, God is there. When we worry about our tomorrows, God is there. And even without lonely hours, God is there. May God hear our joy and admiration. May we celebrate the one who paints rainbows in the sky and leads us to the dance of the stars. tell a story that happened to my daughter and her family the other day. My daughter has two labs, a black and a tan. And one of her neighbors came over the other day and said, um, I just wanted to let you know that your dogs were chasing all the kids on their bikes um, this afternoon. And she goes, well, it couldn't be my dogs. 
They don't even know how to ride a bike. <laughs> Ooh, okay. I want you all to know I read three books last night. Coloring books. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Let's see. One more on this side. Yeah, okay, here we go. You're sure I'm not going to be struck down by telling a joke in church, am I? You're fine. Okay. If the first two didn't get it, you should be All right, all right. How many Presbyterians does it take to change a light bulb? How many? It's going to take at least 15, one to change the light bulb, and three committees to approve the change and decide who will bring the potato salad. Yeah. <laughs> I have one more. Oh, no. She has more. How many preachers does it take to change a light bulb? Let's just stop there. <laughs> it only takes three. One to hold the light bulb and two to turn the ladder. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, Layton. Got one over here, buddy. Okay. Want to know the secret about Bunnel? Okay, what's the secret? Okay. Never mind, you spin it around. <laughs> <laughs> One more. That is great, Layton. Ian, what do you got for us, man? Did you hear about the ill-tempered German sausage? No. I heard it was the worst. <laughs> There is more where that came from. If you are ready with your joke, have no fear. There are more times, but I think after that first round, we need to confess our sin. <laughs> yes, we have messed up. I have news for you. You've messed up, so have I. But guess what? God's all ears ready to listen and to love. So let's take a moment to think about the times we stumbled, goofed up, or played us missed the mark. Let's confess our sins, acknowledging our faults, and seeking reconciliation with one another and with the divine, especially after some of those jokes. <laughs> it's okay, we're all in this together. Oh God, God, oh God, oh God, oh God. God. We, we come, come before you today, today with our heads bowed and our hearts full of laughter. laughter. We, we confess that we often take life too seriously, seriously forgetting that you gave us the gift of humor to lighten our burdens and brighten our, our days. Forgive, forgive us for the times when we've turned our noses up at puns groaned at dad jokes, or failed to see the humor in everyday moments. Forgive us for the times when we've been grumpy instead of grateful, sour instead of silly. We also confess our sins of taking the last slice of pizza without offering to share, Karen, of forgetting to return borrowed umbrellas, and of laughing at our own jokes a little too loudly in public places. Lord, forgive us for the times when we've used humor to hurt rather than heal, when we've used sarcasm as a shield instead of a smile. Help us to embrace the absurdity of life, to laugh at ourselves, and to find joy in unexpected places. And Lord, in your infinite humor, grant us the grace to not take ourselves too seriously, to share our laughter with others, and to spread joy wherever we go. In the name of Jesus, who himself was a lover of jokes. Amen. Hey 
there, friends. Guess what? Our awesome God is all about forgiveness and even fun. So no need to sweat it. When we mess up, we can confess our sins. And God's like, no worries, pals. It's a big warm hug from the universe. So, so we can shake off our crowns. In Jesus Christ, our sins are totally forgiven. We're back in the game, ready to laugh and love like never before. With open arms, God welcomes us back into the joyful embrace of love. Go on now, spread some joy, and tell a good joke. We will, because God's got our backs with a big old smile. Amen. I didn't tell you that last week they learned sign language to that song and some of them remembered it and some of them were flailing their arms around <laughs> pretending like I wouldn't see it. Um, and so I just bailed them out one way or the other. Okay. So yeah, um, so see me after and I'll teach you. Perfect. Yeah, or actually see them after, they've got it. <laughs> um, it is time to herd some kittens and I was wondering if uh, there are any kittens around. I see a spider, but I don't see any kittens. Well, let's just have a spider man come up. Um, it is time for a children's message, and I need your help. I need your help. Can you help me? Um, I want you to tell me something. Um, do you think that God wants us to be serious? No. No, not all the time, right? Does God uh, prefer us to be here? Can you do this? Put your hands right like that. Yeah, perfect. And now, is that how we should be all the time? No. Okay. How about when I'm in the middle of telling a story? No. Wait. <laughs> um, only ask the questions that you're ready for the answer for, TJ. Okay. Um, what if we are excited? Can we be excited? Yeah. Can we be laughing? Yeah. Can we have joy? Yeah. Can you show me your joy face? <laughs> How's that? Now, I look around this room and I see some people who are ready for joy. Do you? Yeah. I see some people who've already had some joy. Yeah? But I was wondering, here, come with me. Hmm. All right, could you do me a favor? Um, here, could you... Um, here's two, and I'm going to take two. Could you help find people who might need one of these? Just let's walk around. Okay. Oh, you got three. Bonus. Okay. Look for people who might need some joy. You've got three. There they are. Okay. You take this side, and I'll take this side. Okay. Who needs some joy? Let's see. We need some joy over here in this section. Let's see. Um, hmm. I'm going to give this to you right here. I see you all pointing at Steve. I have other plans for him. Um, hey, Layton, can you come with me? OK. Um, here we go. Here it is. Uh-oh. How's it open? <laughs> no. 
Now, on Amazon, they said this was one size fits all. This is definitely not one size fits all. This is the furthest thing from one. Oh, there, there we go. Okay. Okay. Here, sir. Yeah. Now that is so much better. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Here. Pass some of these around, okay? Here we go. You take uh, that side. I'll take this side. I just look at Evan. When he was playing the clarinet, he looked so hip. And some of you need to look as hip as him. You take that side. I'll take this side. Okay. Over here. Uh, The tech team, do you see there's some, some humorous looking folks? And then there's this ball of fun sitting at the soundboard. Hey, Brett. Okay, here we go. You, uh, you take this. All right. Now, I don't know how you are possibly going to use the soundboard with these on, but we'll figure it out. Okay. Next on the uh, uh, bulletin. What's it? What comes yeah. next? Jo oh no. Oh no. There's another humor break. Peter, save us. Save us. Um, here we go. Oh, Peter has one. That's a scary thing. Okay. Okay, Peter. Well, you know, you're on. I work at St. Luke's downtown, and lately they were saying that they've been having a shortage of labor and delivery nurses. You know, it could be a very bad thing. They're having a midwife crisis. <laughs> yes! Yes! Excellent! Wow! This was on the marquee of True Value Hardware in Emmett. Do not eat aluminum. Or you will sheet metal. <laughs> oh. oh. Whoa. Like, I'm, I'm ready to just call up and get to music now. I don't know. I don't know if we can go any farther. Kieran, save us for real. Okay. Well, I, I have to do two things now. Yes. One, I have to come up here to Peter because oh, no. because your uh, prayer confession called yep. me out. 
Peter, I'm really sorry that I ate the last slice of pizza this morning without asking. <laughs> Reconciliation, y'all. And then the other thing is, actually I'm kind of embarrassed because I thought this was talent show night and I've been working really hard on a song, but I thought maybe I would do it anyway. Can you, can you hold the microphone for me? Uh, yes. Okay, here we go. And it, it has a, a dance element too. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle, here is my handle. Oh, I'm so sorry. This is why I've been, been practicing, because I, okay, let's try again. <clears throat> I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle, here is my handle. Okay, I'm gonna try one more time. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle, here is my handle. Well, I'll be, I'm a sugar bowl. <laughs> So uh, this, is, this is a true story. I, so as you all know, I'm priest at, uh, at uh, St. Matthew's Episcopal Church, and we've had this awful squirrel problem. And so we've become inundated with squirrels. And so at first it wasn't too bad, you know, we, we, we tried to be friendly to them, but you know, after a while, we, you know, Sunday after Sunday, we, during coffee hour, you know, we'd go back into the sanctuary and a lot of them had been kind of uh, tearing on the carpet and, and all of a sudden you were finding that they were eating through drywall. And so this just got to be really bad. And we thought, well, what are we gonna do? Because by this time we had hundreds of squirrels. So I talked to the vestry, and my vestry, we all got together and we talked about it, and we decided there's absolutely no way that we're going to harm these squirrels. We've got to find something to do to get rid of these squirrels. So we thought about it, and perfect, perfect answer. We baptized them all. Now they only show up on Easter and Christmas. <laughs> If you have a squirrel problem, call Sean. He's your guy. All right, friends. We are, uh, what are we at? I should really pay attention to what we're doing here tonight. Um, okay, yep, it's, it's his turn. Okay. It's hard to follow that. <clears throat> That's an odd sounding truck. Oh God, we seek your guidance and insight. Open our minds and our hearts to the playful whispers of your spirit. As we turn to your word, may it dance off the page and into our souls, illuminating our path with the light of understanding and the warmth of your love. All this we ask in the name of our risen Lord, who turns our expectations upside down and fills us with everlasting joy. Amen. <laughs> Deuteronomy, right? Sure, well, everyone. Really? No. Totally? No. And the dog went with them? No. No. So now a reading from the Gospel of Luke, a lot longer than the one he originally chose. Now on the same day, two of them were going to the village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all the things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came up near them and went with them, but the eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other as you walk along? They stood still and looked sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? And he asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, 
and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and beside all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some of the women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were, were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all of scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he was going on. But they urged him strongly saying, stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is nearly over. So he went to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scripture to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the 11 and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord is risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened to them on the road and how he had made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened and why do you do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Now I'm getting ready for that. Some people take the bulletin and the liturgy so seriously. It's a fact they're snuggling up already. You're not helping, Sean. Um, as I uh, get started here, um, I'm going to have this really awesome bow tie. Um, that is thing one and thing two. Uh, they're very silly. I'm going to take it off and I'm going to unbutton. Um, I cannot begin to tell you how hot my pants are. <laughs> and, and although this is not going to solve that problem, it's the only option I have right now. Jackie is two for two tonight, and she's about to be banished to the back pew very soon. Wow. 
Well, um, so we just heard a big part of uh, the Easter story, the Easter morning and Easter afternoon, Easter evening story as uh, the Gospel of Luke shares it in chapter 24. And um, I want us to remember in the midst of all the joy and the laughter that that first day, it was not a laughing matter for the disciples. They were grieving. They're trudging along, Cleopas and his friend um, on the road, filled with grief. Their loved one, their friend, their teacher had been killed, and it could very well be that they would be next, right? That is not anything to joke about. And so I want you to imagine that scene as they are sad and walking along uh, the Emmaus Road and this stranger comes up to join them on the journey, that stranger being none other than Jesus himself. I've always heard a touch of humor in Jesus' voice and in his storytelling in chapter 24, and I wonder if you might have heard or felt that too as you hear this story. They're walking along the road and Jesus comes up as if he is an actor and he is playing the role of a completely uninformed and ignorant bystander. And that allows him to hear intently the sadness that they are expressing. And he is listening to them as they share the sadness and as they are um, as they are expressing their deep grief. He says, what are, you, what are you talking about as you walk along the road? As if to really get them going, right? I love that because they are responding with a touch of irony that they don't even know they're responding to. When they say, are you the only one in these parts that haven't heard the things that have happened? And they're saying it to the one who not only heard about it, but lived through it, right? And then Jesus, here's the kicker. Jesus, I see the smirk on his face, the twinkle in his eye as he leans in a little bit closer and he says, what things? And they go on and they go on and they go on. I think Jesus was probably chuckling deep down inside of himself at that point because he knew that eventually those two friends, those two disciples were going to figure out that they had just been tricked into telling the Easter story to the risen Lord himself. They would look back on that moment and say, Jesus, that rascal, right? So they go on and on and he tells them the story to connect the dots but it's not until they get to the house and they invite him in, showing great hospitality, they break the bread, and it is in those moments, that moment at the table where their eyes are open and they recognize him. And that too is a bit of, uh, a, bit of a, a touch of irony, right? Where um, it is a, an allusion to the sacrament of communion. It's what we seek every time we gather at this table, that our eyes would be opened in the breaking of bread and that we might recognize it. But the story doesn't end there. And when we tell that story of the Emmaus Road encounter, we usually do stop there because as Peter noted, it is a long passage. But that story goes on, and in that very same hour, they leave again and head back to Jerusalem one more time. It must have been the longest 24-hour day known to humanity. So they lace up their sneakers one more time, they get on the road, and they go to share what they had seen and what they had heard. And the humor continues in that next scene. Jesus continues to surprise and to delight as they are gathered in that room. He comes in again with that twinkle in his eye. And he asks the disciples gathered in that room, what could you possibly have to be frightened about? And of course, they are feeling that mix of terror and excitement. They have heard the news of the empty tomb. They have heard the story of the folks who had just come from the Emmaus encounter. And yet they're still fearful. What do you have to be frightened about, Jesus asks. 
So then he patiently, and as any good teacher would do, Priscilla, tell me if I'm right here, that patience of a teacher often comes with a little dose of humor, right? Jesus says, look at my hands. Look at my feet. There's no way a ghost could ever look this good. <laughs> I imagine him doing that, right? Have you ever thought about that? But then comes the piece de resistance. Jesus is the master of comedic timing. And so after he shows his hands and his feet and he makes reference to the fact that there's no way he could be a ghost, look at his complexion. He looks at the disciples and he says, do you have anything to eat around here? Which is a way of saying, Y'all, I have seen some things today, and it has made me a little bit peckish. Does someone have a bag of Doritos or something to fill me in right here? And they went with the broiled fish. I think that's a good option for what they had. Jesus was constantly defying the expectations and resetting the imagination reminding them of what joy would look like in the midst of something that would be anything but joyful. Beyond the laughter of all of that, we find the profound truth. In all of these verses, we do see that Jesus is reminding us that the power of evil can never contain him. And that's something worth celebrating. He also invites us into the joy of new life to transform sorrow into laughter, to transform doubts into faith, to transform grief into joy, to transform fear into courage, to say, I'm still with you on that journey. Now let's grab a bite to eat and enjoy it. So in the long and storied history of holy humor, which I referred to earlier tonight, we can celebrate tonight. We can relax. We can put our feet up. We can put an awesome wig on, Steve. <laughs> because it is not distracting us from the sacred. It is reminding us of the beauty of the sacred. It is reminding us that the beauty of that sacred moment is filled with joy and excitement and enthusiasm. And we, by God's grace, get to be a part of that too. We find joy in the unexpected. We find hope in the face of despair. We find Jesus his very presence in our midst when we thought that he was gone forever. And the funny thing about that is that in the resurrection of Christ, when we see that joy bubbling up from what we thought was nothing more than ruins and rubble, we are reminded that God will always have the last laugh when it comes to evil. So we can celebrate tonight. We can rejoice this night. We can put our lobster hat back on Brett this night. <laughs> Not to call you out. Yeah, he's a little. Because we are the people of God created in the image of God created to celebrate and rejoice and, yes, even laugh together. Thanks be to God. And amen. Um, as we turn to our time of offering, you come on up. I have one for you. Why don't jokes about money ever work? Because they're always senseless. <laughs> the best way to get me to stop telling jokes is to pass the offering plate and I'll leave you all alone. <laughs> Let's enjoy the music as another of God's uh, gifts this day.
Should I change my mind? Okay. Did I grab the wrong one? Oh, there we are. This. Okay. What is red and black and white all over? A sunburned penguin. Why did the cow cross the road? It was the chicken's day off. Knock, knock. Who's there? Boo. Boo who? Don't cry. That was my last joke. <laughs> wow. The, I don't know about y'all. The funniest thing for me was the eye roll happening right next to her <laughs> in that moment. This is a Sunday school joke, so feel free to laugh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> This teacher, Sunday school teacher, was concerned that her children may not be getting the message that she was trying to give them. So she asked them to draw pictures of what she'd been teaching them over the past. And she was looking at them, oh, yeah, that's, that's nice, that's a nativity, and on. And she came across this one little girl whose picture was an airplane with four people sitting in it. That was very puzzling to her. She says, what is an airplane with four people? And she says, well, that's a Holy Family's flight to Egypt. <laughs> Mary, Joseph, and the baby Jesus. The teacher says, well, that's all good, but who's this fourth person? And she says, oh, teacher, that's Pontius the pilot. <laughs> I never remember jokes, so this is an old one, um, which you probably have heard. A minister dies and is waiting in line at the pearly gates. Ahead of him is a guy who's dressed in sunglasses, a loud shirt, leather jacket, and jeans. St. Peter addresses this guy, who are you so that I may know whether or not to admit you to the kingdom of heaven? The guy replies, I'm Joe Cohen, taxi driver, New York City. St. Peter consults his list. He smiles and says to the taxi driver, take this silken robe and golden staff and enter the kingdom of heaven. The taxi driver goes into heaven with his robe and staff and it's a minister's turn. He stands erect and booms out, I'm Joseph Snow, pastor of Calvary for the last 43 years. St. Peter consults his list. He says to the minister, take this cotton robe and wooden staff and enter the kingdom of heaven. Just a minute, says the minister. That guy's a taxi driver and he gets a silken robe and golden staff? How can this be? Up here we work by results, says St. Peter. While you preached, 
people slept. While he drove, they prayed. <laughs> So, being a former first grade teacher, I know that lots of little ones struggle with math. It's so abstract. So, teacher was trying to help Jimmy, who was really struggling, and said, okay, Jimmy, if you put one hand in your pocket and you pull out a nickel, and you take your other hand, put it in your pocket, and pull out another nickel, what do you have? Prompt reply, somebody else's pants. <laughs> Then, uh, this was a Christian school, so in the cafeteria, in the, the long line, there was fruit at the beginning, you take one, and so you have, sure you have your fruit. And there's a clearly adult written note in front of the apple that said, just take one, God is watching. And then there was the entree, and blah, 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 and then you get to the end of the line, and there's this huge platter heaped with cookies. And in front of the platter of cookies, there's this little, clearly, child-written note that says, take all you want, God's watching the apples. <laughs> yes, oh, I see, I see one more over here getting my attention, okay. All right. Knock, knock. Who's there? Dull pencil. Dull pencil who? Never mind, it's pointless. <laughs> there it is. Wow. Well, um, I think um, after some of the jokes that we've told tonight, um, we need prayer. Um, I'm looking at you, Jackie. I'm looking at you. Fortunately, we are all able to gather here at the table of grace, and we remember that this is a table of celebration, a table where we receive love, a table where we are included, a table where we can release the burdens that we bring with us as we remember that we are God's beloved. And so let us gather, let us celebrate, let us be fed and nourished, for that invitation is one that we each and all receive. Let's pray. Oh God, surely your mouth was filled with laughter as you sang creation into being. The heavens rang with shouts of joy as fruit-bearing trees sprang up, as green pastures rippled with wonder. We thank you for the world around us. We thank you that through it all, every time we have failed to find the joy and have turned the other way, you call us once more to be in relationship with you. We thank you, O oh God, for the gift of Jesus. Seeing the nightmare of our lives, he became one of us so that we might see the dreams you have for us. Knowing how our hearts overflowed with fear and bitterness and worries, he came with peace and comfort teaching that the body is more than sin, that life is more than death. He sacrificed himself and became our salvation by rising from the grave. And so as we shout with joy for his resurrection, we speak of the mystery of faith, the greatest joke ever played on the evil that would try to hold fast to this world. Evil will not win, love abounds. By your great unending love, you inspire in us a spirit of imagination. Help us to use that spirit to play more, to laugh more, and to create beauty in every way possible. Remind us to laugh out loud, for doing so may just heal some of the wounds within us. We pray, too, for all of those who cannot find their laughter today or for whom life is not a laughing matter, for those who are grieving or suffering illness of body or mind or spirit, for those who are lonely and in need of someone to share their time and friendship, for those who are targeted by governments and hecklers and those who seek to cast out, for all of those who live in harm's way whose backyards are a war zone, 
for all of those other needs that are known by you. Now pour out your spirit upon this bread and cup to be the holy food and drink of new and unending life in you. May this meal strengthen us so that we might bring healing to a world shattered, shattered by violence and despair. Let us bring compassion to a world separated by infection and need. And when all of our worrying hours have ended, when we are clothed in your mercy forever, we will gather with our siblings from throughout the ages, our mouths bursting with laughter, our hearts singing songs of joy to you, O Lord, our God. Hear us now as we pray as Christ taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We read that Jesus gathered in a room with his friends to share a meal, to be in a time of fellowship together. And what is fellowship if not a time of joy? And as they gathered for that meal, he took bread, common bread, and blessed it and broke it before them. And he said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Whenever you do this, I want you to remember me. And in the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. I want you to drink from it and remember me. And so even tonight, thousands of years later, we gather together at this same table to celebrate and to remember and give thanks to a good and gracious God for these good and gracious gifts. I'd like to invite the um, servers who will be helping to serve this evening to come forward at this time. And as they do, a few reminders. First, for those who are with us online, I hope you can find bread and juice, crackers and water, anything it is at your home or wherever you are that will enable you to be a part of this service together this night. For those who are here in the room, I invite you to come down the center aisle to receive uh, gluten-free bread and grape juice, and, um, and then hold on to the bread and juice as you head back up the side aisles, and we will partake of all of those elements um, together uh, as a, um, a reminder of the unity to which we are called. We are blessed to be a part of the family of faith. Let us taste and see that the Lord is good.
The bread of life. And the cup of salvation. Friends, throughout this past week, we have had eclipse fever, even though the eclipse was not much to look at in Idaho, and really we shouldn't be looking at it without those glasses on. But when we look at the pictures of those e eclipse photos from across the nation, we are reminded God made that. And as we look out on the sidewalk and you see little ants starting to poke through uh, between the cracks of the sidewalk, digging out, doing a little spring cleaning, getting the dirt out to put new dirt in or whatever it is the ants do in an ant mound. Um, it's a reminder God made that. And when we gather at this table and we celebrate the gift of this meal and our invitation to it, we are reminded that God made us too. And so in that spirit, let us stand as we are able in body or in spirit to sing our closing hymn as we celebrate all of the big and small things that God has created. And let us give thanks with joy and celebration. into the world with joy and with celebration, with courage and with laughter. And a saxophone. And a saxophone. And a saxophone, yeah. Do we all get one? <laughs> no, just me. Can I get the clarinet? Uh, that's my clarinet. Can <laughs> can I? You can buy yourself a clarinet. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to need one. my it's kazoo, really but now I'm ready. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, can we tune it? Hold on. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm ready. Where was I? It's the benediction. Um, we go out of this place, and some of you are probably saying, thank goodness. Um, and we go knowing that God's wisdom is with us, God's courage is with us, God's light is with us, God's laughter and justice and mercy and grace and love go with us. Every step of the way, we celebrate and we rejoice in that good and glad truth. 
to let us go and let us go celebrating this day and every day. Amen. Thank you.